Greetings, one and all. I'm from the country, Somerset. My mother was a pastor for over 30 years. So I knew right from wrong, I was brought up to serve God. But I chose to go my own way. And I suffered terrible for it. But I thank God that I've had a road to Damascus experience. And I've rededicated my life and my heart to God so that God's will can be done in my life. My name is Brother Randy Lightroom. Join me as I share the word of God. Praise the Lord. Uh, my message today is called Protection in Your Dothan. Protection in Your Dothan. That word is spelled D O T H A M. And we're going to actually get into the specifics of the Dothan uh, um, as this message on fools. The primary point I want to bring out is assurance. It's an assurance that we should have as children of God, specifically as the scripture unfolds, if you find yourself in a dothum, if you find yourself in some form of dothum, we have an assurance of how we are to handle it and how things will unfold because of what God has promised in his word. So let's look at the scripture reading. It's from Genesis chapter 37, and it's going to be verse 13 to 20. Here begins the reading of the word of God. And Israel said unto Joseph, Do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem? Come, and I will send thee unto them. And he said to him, here am I. And he said to him, Go, I pray thee, see whether it be well with thy brethren, and well with the flocks, and bring me word again. So he sent him out of the vale of Hebron, and he came to Shechem. And a certain man found him, and behold, he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him, saying, What seekest thou? And he said, I seek my brethren. Tell me, I pray thee, where they feed their flocks. And the man said, they are departed hands. For I heard them say, let us go to Dothan. And Joseph went after his brethren and found them in Dothan. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. And they say one to another, Behold, this dreamer come, come now, therefore, and let us slay him and cast him into some pit. And we will say some evil beast had devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. May God have a blessing to the reading of his holy word. The topic is protection in your Dothan. We just read there what happens and the plot that is laid before Joseph in Dothan when he goes to Dothan. I have two points to use to try to bring this out. Um, point number one is you will have to pass by Dothan. As a child of God, as a growing, developing Christian, you will have to pass by Dothan sometime or another in your Christian experience. The topic is we have protection in that Dothan. Point one is you will have to pass by Dothan. Point two is you are protected in. Dothan. And specifically, I want to talk about your ministry, whatever your ministry might be. Point one would be specifically dealing with that calling on your life or those dreams and desires you might have. But point two is more specifically towards those that have any form of ministry and they find themselves in a Dothan situation. You are protected. 
And this is why the theme of this message is assurance. In a day, in a time that we live in now, when it's so much uncertainty, as uh, our sister Stacy was praying, she mentioned the fact that, you know, there are so many uncertainties going on and conspiracy theorists specifically are rated around this pandemic and some called pandemic. It's so much speculation and so much uncertainty and lack of trust, specifically as it relates to governments and even medical officials. So much uncertainty going on. I've come today to give you a message of assurance, a message that we don't need to fear. We don't need to panic. We don't need to worry. We have an assurance that no matter what our Gotham situation might be, no matter who is conspiring against us in Gotham, who is laying in wait to steal your dreams in Gotham, we have an assurance that God is with us. And no matter what we face, we will always be okay. Always be okay. Let's look at point number one. Um, it says, you will have to pass by Dutton. And it's specifically dealing with your calling. You will have to pass by Dutton sometime in your walk in life. This word Dutton um, in Hebrew means uh, two rows, uh, two cisterns, um, or even double feasts. Many scholars say it also means double dealing, hypocrisy, deception. Those are the other terms that the word dafim is actually used for uh, by some scholars in, in, in among Hebrew. But I want to concentrate on this deception that's, that dafim shows up in, this hypocrisy. This two-faced part of Dothan, this danger, this double dealing that is waiting for you in your Dothan in life. I read earlier, Genesis 37, well known account of, of Joseph as he goes to check on his brothers. Joseph, <laughs> some would say, made the mistake of revealing his dreams to his brothers. In his dreams to his brother, he gets elevated. And his brothers look up to him and actually worship him and bow down to him. These are things that his brothers didn't want to hear, especially if you know the proper account of how Joseph was viewed by his father and observed by the rest of his brothers. He was a favorite son, and these other ten brothers knew it, and they didn't like it. This scripture goes on to show that when Joseph goes to find his brothers, they are not where they originally were supposed to be. A man finds them and guides them, and that's no, no, no. I think. I saw them and they said they were going to this place called Dotham. Joseph decides to go to Dotham to find his brothers. And on his way there to them, they see him afar off, scripture says, and they conspire to kill him. I want you to know that in this walk you have, in the dreams, in the calling that God may put on your life, there will be people in Dotham waiting to steal that dream from them. Scripture goes on to read in Genesis that they said, let us kill him and see what will come of those dreams, he said, that were coming from God. If God has a calling on your life, it does not mean that you're going to have to bypass Dotham to reach those dreams. God has promised you whatever has promised you in them dreams. 
but he does not say that he's going to keep you from having to face people and things that are out to destroy you. His own brothers, his own brothers are conspiring to kill him with the mindset, well, let's go see what's going to come of his dreams right now. Those of us that are children of God, that are serving God with a pure heart, that are seeking to do what God would have us to do in our lives, there will be people that are plotting against you. There are people that are going to be hating you for no reason at all. You don't need to do something to them. They don't even know why they dislike you. And they're going to be fighting against you. There are many people, as you strive to do what God might be showing you to do, that's going to be trying to get you to lose focus of the dream, to lose focus of the calling that's on your life. Let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 12. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 12. It reads, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ shall suffer persecution. Everybody that's living godly for God are going to face persecution in their life trying to serve God. Genesis chapter 37, verses 17 to 18 highlights, and the man said, they are departed hence, for I heard them say, let us go to Dotham. And Joseph went after his brethren and found them in Dotham. And when they saw him afar off, this is his brothers. Even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Praise the Lord. Your dreams and your calling will be tested. Timothy says that and all who want to be a true child of God, who truly want to serve God, are going to face some forms of persecution. When you're trying to do right, it's always going to be people like Joseph's brothers waiting in a duffel in your life to test you, to try to discourage you, to steal your dream of battering yourself to steal your dream of fulfilling what God has showed you you are to do. Their mindset was, let's kill him. And then let's see what's going to happen with all these so-called dreams that he has. But I'm here to tell you today that despite those that raid in Gotham to destroy you, there is a God that is in control of your life. And though they fight against you, they can't stop whatever plan God has got for your life. This is the assurance we as children of God have. Timothy says, all who will live godly shall suffer persecution. That's a given. That goes along with our dreams and the calling God has on your life. That goes with everything you want to do right. Expect persecution. Expect people waiting in Gotham to try to discourage you to try to kill you, to try to steal your dream. You have got to be tested. Let's look at 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. It's going to deal more specifically with who is behind these types of Gotham on the tax. 1 Peter 5 and 8 says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. There is a devil that is in Gotham in your life, seeking to devour you. The same way Joseph's brothers, when they saw him from afar, they took the mindset of a lion, looking at prey, and was seeking to destroy him. Second Kings 6 verses 8 to 11 gives a beautiful account of how people may be waiting to destroy your life, seeking to knock you off the course that God has set for your life. Verse eight says, then 
the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of and saved himself there not once nor twice. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was so troubled for this thing. And he called his servants and said unto them, will ye not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? Praise the Lord. Those of us that are familiar with that specific reading that I just read in uh, Second Kings there would know that this is the time when Elijah was guiding Israel. And when you read that scripture, it says that the king of Syria had made his mind up that in such and such a place, I'm going to wait on Barnes Corner for Israel. And when Israel comes by Barnes Corner, I'm going to attack him. But every time he planned that, God gave that understanding to Elijah. And Elijah went and warned the king of Israel not once or twice. He got it many times. So every time the king was laying a plot to destroy Israel, Elijah was getting the information from God and then warning Israel not to go by that way. So they'll be waiting on Barnes Corner for Israel, and Israel would never show up. And it finishes up by saying, King of Syria says, listen, please tell me who is sticking up for Israel? Who keeps giving Israel all this inside information? I bring this up to show you that when you're striving to do what God would have you to do in your walk, you don't need to do something to somebody for them to be plotting against you. You don't know who is plotting against you. 2022 is just starting. I want you to know that there are dolphins waiting for you along this year, whether it's January, February, March, April, May, June, July, etc. There is a dolphin waiting in your life as you strive to live for God, as you strive to do what is right. There are going to be people plotting to destroy your life. There are people plotting to see you fall. My word today is that God is still in control. No matter what they say about this pandemic, what they say about the vaccines or the boosters or any new stuff that's getting implemented by governments, I'm telling you today that we have an assurance that despite this devil that's a roaring lion, that's running about seeking to destroy you, you have an assurance that God is in control. Bob Marley used to sing the song that many of the rulers of the world are seeking to destroy this world. And he talks about the um, atomic bombs and, and nuclear bombs. But Bob Marley had the wisdom way back then to say, but none of them can stop the times. Bob Marley takes that position because despite all what the many rulers of the world are able to create in terms of nuclear bombs and all types of evilness, Bob Marley knew that God is in control. So none of them can stop the times, though they have the power and the technology that on paper should be able to stop the dark times, we serve a God that's always in control. And when people are plotting against you, there is a God in heaven that continues to look out for you. My encouragement for you today is that when you're being tested in your dark room, hold on to God. Because in the test in dark room, it may look like the evil ones are actually winning. Let's move on to point number two. Point number two says, you are protected in this dolphin. And I 
We want to highlight your ministry, specifically as it relates to your ministry. Whatever that ministry might be in your life that God has called you to do. And that ministry doesn't have to be something that's highly recognized. It could be as simple as representing yourself as a child of God in your everyday living, in your family, in your relationship, on your job. Whatever God's ministry is for your life, you are guaranteed to be protected despite everybody and anything that's plotting up against you. You don't need to know what's waiting in Gotham. I'm here to tell you that you're still well protected in this earth because God is in full control despite what is happening you are got God's protection every step of your way as you put your confidence in God. You trusting God does not eliminate people fighting against you. It doesn't eliminate problems coming your way. God allows them so that your dependence and your uh, uh, reliance is on him, not in the lack of problems in your life, but in your confidence that whether they are there or not, whether you find yourself in Bethlehem, you put your trust in God. Rather, governments are saying all those types of stuff that are making people anxious and panicky and worrying, you rely on God. You take your confidence that God is in control of whatever's coming your way. Let's look at uh, uh, Jeremiah 29 and verse 11, it says, this is God speaking through Jeremiah to the Israelites. This is a letter that God instructs Jeremiah to write to those Israelites that are in captivity in Babylon as King Nebuchadnezzar has them in bondage. This is what he tells him in this part of the latter, he says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Listen to that assurance. I know the thoughts that I think towards you, okay? Thoughts of peace, not of evil, and to give you an expected end. Let's look at uh, Genesis 37, 20, and 21. Listen to what these guys' plans are. And remember what Jeremiah says. Um, this is his brothers again. It says, come now, therefore, and let us slay him and cast him into some pit. And we will say, some evil beasts have devoured him. And we shall see what will become of his dreams. And Reuben heard it. And he delivered him out of their hands and said, let us not kill him. Though Reuben didn't like his brother, Reuben probably did not even know why he chose to fight and to protect Joseph, because Reuben didn't like him either. But God has a way, as Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, I know the thoughts that I have for you. Okay, thoughts of peace. God has his plan for your life. In that plan, it does not mean the absence of Gotham experiences and Gotham types of people in your life. Double dealing, backbiting, conspiring against you for without any cause. You don't need to do anything to these people for them to be plotting in your life. You just need to be serving God. You just need to be following the dreams that God has laid in your heart. And there will be those in Gotham that are plotting against you. They will be like the king of Syria who makes up his mind that I'm going to wait in this corner here. And when Israel comes across, I'm going to take them out. But then they start to wonder why it never works out. Those brothers planned on killing Joseph. They had their mind made up. They had a beautiful cover story. 
But God touches Reuben's heart and tells Reuben, protect your brother. And this is what God will do in your life. He will find whatever way he chooses because he knows the plans he has for you. He knows the expected end he has for you. So even when people are plotting against you, you don't need to know what to do. You don't need to try to fix everything that that's coming against you with. Know that there is a God that's in control. 2022, you don't know what tomorrow brings, much less next week or next month or in three months or six months. We don't know that. The beautiful part is we don't need to know it. We just need to know that God is in control and we put our confidence in God so that when we continue on this life journey and we find that we have to go to a bathroom experience, no matter who's laying in wait, plotting against us, we have an assurance that God knows his plan for our lives. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 54 and verse 17. Isaiah 54 and verse 17 says, no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. What? No weapon formed against thee shall prosper. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Whether they find themselves in Bethel or in Paradise Island. God is in full control. Let's look at 2 Kings again, chapter 6, verse 15 to um, um, 17. This is a, a continuation. It says, and when the servant of the man of God was risen early and going forth, behold, an host, a whole host, compassed the city both with chariots and horses. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? <laughs> you know, what, what are we going to do? And he, being Elijah, answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of a young man, Elijah's servant. His eyes gets opened. And he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire run about Elijah. Mercy. Isaiah said, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. We are given an assurance that we know how much we're protected in our everyday life. This scriptures here show how protected we really are. Isaiah says, no weapon, no plot, no double dealing, no hypocrisy, no backbiting, no doctrinal experience that's waiting for you conspiring in 2022 that you're not reached yet is going to conquer you. It's going to devour you. Though Satan is running up and down like a lion, seeking whom he may devour in 2022, as we keep our trust in God, God is letting us know that we are surrounded with protection Elijah tells God to open his servant's eyes so that he can physically see what was going on in the spiritual realm. In the spiritual realm around us as children of God, we don't see those angels. We don't see those chariots of fire that are around us. Elijah gives his servant a special opportunity to see into the spiritual realm. And he saw that the mountain was surrounded by chariots of fire. Outside of that were the Syrians surrounding them. They thought 
that they were surrounding were Elijah was. But what they couldn't see was that inside, before they could get to Elijah, it was a mountain full of angels with chariots of fire protecting God's servant. When the servant wakes up in the morning, he is like us. He sees with his natural eye what's going on in Dothan. He is in Dothan. Those Syrian army guys have finally found out that Elijah has been the person that's been telling Israel every time they were plotting against Israel. They found out that Elijah was the person that keeps telling Israel how to avoid being attacked. So the king of Syria has made his mind up that this Elijah who has been wiretapping his house is got to go. This is the first recording of a wiretap ever. It happens in the spirit realm because when they made their minds up that when the king of Syria made his mind up that somebody had to be a double agent in his camp that keeps warning Israel every time he plans on destroying them. And he wanted to find out who that was. They knew that it was Elijah. And they said, listen, no, no, it's nobody that's a double dealer her. It's nobody her that is a uh, mold. But it's this guy, Elijah. He can tell the king of Israel what you're thinking when you're in your bedroom. Not only what you plan when you set up your council to actually do your war against Israel. He knows what you're saying, man. It's just you in your bedroom. This is the most advanced form of wiretapping, okay? It's the first known form of it, okay? And God has given it to e Elijah. This king of Syria makes his mind up. Well, I'm about to destroy this wiretapping Elijah. And he sends the man there to destroy him. The servant wakes up in the morning and sees that he is completely surrounded with the army of Syria. I want you to know that in 2022, there may come a time when you wake up in the morning and you find that you're surrounded by Satan and satanic on the tax. You may wake up and find yourself in Dothan and find all these plots going on against God's plan that he has given you in your life. Don't be like the servant who only sees the attackers and gets overwhelmed. Stand on a spiritual realm and be able to be like Elijah and say, God, open their eyes so that they may see that it's more with us than it is um, against us. That's why this, the scripture says, greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. They may make their plans in Gotham for 2022 for you. Be assured, have that assurance that God says no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Stay in the will of God. God is not promising the absence of problems. He's promising that in the midst of them, he will be there in that inner circle. They were surrounded by angels with chariots of fire that had full control of all that Syrian army who thought that they had this man, Elijah, surrounded. Scripture goes on to say that Elijah takes the position in directing the angels in what to do. He tells the angels, blind them, blind them all. And then he goes to them and asks them, what you want? Where you want to go? And he takes them and he leads them right into Israel, right into Israel's hands. And they wanted to, Israel sought, should they kill him? Should they destroy him? David said, thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. God delivered all those men that were seeking to destroy 
Elijah into his hands. Elijah takes them into Israel and gets their eyes open. When their eyes are open, they realize that the inside, the animus can completely surround it and finish. It's over. There's no way out for them. Elijah instructs the king of Israel, feed him and send him on the way. This is the type of God that I serve. Feed him and send him on the way. Scripture goes on to say that they, they left and they never came back to Gotham. They never came back to trouble uh, um, Elijah again. This is what God will do in your Gotham experience. He will confuse those that are plotting against you if you keep your trust in him. Not in your circumstances, not in being overwhelmed by those that are plotting against you, those that are lying on you, those that are seeking to destroy your life, but taking the position that I'm going to have confidence in God. Keep that confidence in God, no matter who is coming against you, who is plotting against you. Know that God says that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. God knows his plans for your life. Let's, let's look at Acts chapter 12. Uh, verses one to eight is eight verses, but it highlights to the highest level how God has a plan for your life. It should be Romans eight verse, and, and then I'll go into the the uh, Acts twelve. So it should be Romans eight twenty eight. That's going to set it up, and then I'll let Acts twelve show you exactly where I'm going there. But Romans eight twenty eight is well known. Also, it says, "And we know that all things work together for good." to them that love God, hmm? to them who are the call according to his purpose. That scripture does not say that all things are always okay for those that love God. It says that, and we know that all things will work together for good. And those of us that know the story of Joseph understand that it worked together for Joseph to get thrown into that pit, to be sold into Egypt and to be put into a prison, to be raised out of the prison, to be the second in command of Egypt. And that every dream that he ever dreamt worked together into completion. God doesn't say that everything is gonna be perfect for you. He says that if you're keeping your trust in him, though these things may come your way, though you find yourself in Bethlehem, with people plotting against you, they will work together for your good. Let's look at Acts 12 verses one to eight, a beautiful example of how God moves in ways that don't make sense to us. Acts 12 verses one to eight says, now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread, and when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quadrants of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of a church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers. Just visualize him, his sleeping between two soldiers born with two chains and the keepers before the door kept the prison so what clear that he is in jail inside of a jail inside of a jail with people right next to him keeping him in place so that Herod can kill him because that's Herod's plan verse 7 says and behold the angel of the Lord came upon him and a light shined in the prison and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise, up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself, and bind on thy sandals. 
And so we did. And he said unto him, cast thy garments upon the get rest and follow me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want you to know that you can be in a Gotham experience, chained with God's all around you, people plotting on every side to destroy your life. But if your confidence is in God, if your trust is in God, God is assuring you that you will be okay in this Gotham experience. We have this life that we live in God. It is secure in the Gotham experience. Peter is waiting to die. He watched and he knows James has been in the same situation and James is dead now. And now Herod wants to do the same to him the very next day. But scripture says prayers were made for him while he sat in that Gotham jail. And an angel of God came and rescued him. I am assuring you today that if God's plan for you is to make it through whatever experience you have to make it through, you will make it, whatever that Gotham experience is. Whether they are brothers and sisters fading to destroy your life, whether it's an army surrounding you on your job or in your family or in your relationship, in your country, God is in control and he will fix it. Let God be your confidence. They're going to lie against you. They're going to plot against you. You must remain faithful to God. You must remain trusting God. You can control those that are plotting in doctrine. It's not your business to know who's plotting against you. Your business is to remain focused on the dreams that God has put in your life. Re remain focused to the calling that's on your life. Remain focused to the ministry that God has you doing. And let the haters hate. Let the plotters plot. But God is promising you that he will deliver you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. There are angels surrounding you every day. Even if they have to go into the prison between two gods and take the chains off you and get you out of there. It doesn't matter. All these scriptures just highlight the fact that no matter what the scenario is, God delivers. This is the assurance we have in 2022. When there's so much uncertainty out there about a pandemic or a pandemic or anything else, what's going on. We ain't got to worry about what serious king is plotting against Israel. We don't have to worry about what governments are plotting against us. We don't have to be anxious. We keep our trust in God. God knows his plans for our lives. He has an expected end for us. We're only gonna die when God wants us to die. We're only gonna suffer while God wants us to suffer. He will deliver us from everything that he plans on us being delivered from. God is in control. Peter didn't die. James did because that was his expected end. It looked like it was Peter's expected end. God is always in control. Nothing can happen in your life. Those brothers made up their mind that this dreamer that's coming, we're going to kill him. And all those dreams he was talking about, let's go see what's going to happen about it. There are people plotting that in 2022 against you right now. Keep your confidence and trust in God. No matter what they're plotting, no matter what's coming up against you, this is the assurance we have as children of God. Let's rest in this assurance. Let's rest in this confidence. No matter what comes up against you, Take the position, I will trust God. And Romans 8.28 says that it will work together for my good because my reliance is on God. This is what God has laid on my heart today. And I pray that something I've said continues to stimulate your spirit man and encourage you to trust God that no matter what you face in this life, you will trust God. 
No matter who plots against you, you will trust God and God will bring you through it. I want to take this time right now to do a altar call. If anyone has not accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, this is the opportunity that I want to give to you to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. As we begin this new year and we have the calling of God on our lives, you would know it, whoever you are, if God is calling you and you want to surrender your life to God, this is that opportunity. If you have made your mind up that this is, you, this is what you want, please repeat this after me. If this is what God has laid on your heart in terms of you surrendering your life to God so you can have Christ as your Lord and Savior. Repeat this in the name of Jesus after me. Father God, I know that Jesus died and rose again for me on the cross. I believe in what Christ has done on the cross. I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior as I repent from my sins. I accept Jesus into my life as I believe in what he has accomplished on the cross. I thank you, God, for saving my life. I thank you, God, for coming into my life. If that has been your sincere response and you repeated the words, please contact us by the details that will be available. We would love to be of a further encouragement to you. Anyone else out there that wants to rededicate their life to God, that wants a closer walk with God, this is also an opportunity uh, um, for you to do that. Um, you know, those of us that are saved and need to rededicate our lives, you know what you've got to do. This is that opportunity for you to make that commitment between you and God.